Right then, race video time. This one we're going to mix it up a little bit and throw a little bit of workshop stuff in there, whether that's a good idea or not. And it'll probably split into two parts of the racing, so we'll see. Anyway, just been and got a, the latest delivery item from Oliver, AJ Glass Fibre. So, Harry made the moulds for this a couple of weeks ago and then we finally got them sorted. So these are going on. Bit of redesigning the sculpting, because the last one were moulded from an original, whereas this, We've tried making the mould a bit more like a mould rather than like a finished article and then make a mould and make another one. So anyway, we've done that. So that's that. Really happy with them. So they'll be on the website. I wish this existed rather than having to make it, but it doesn't exist. Front bumper, this is the latest revision of them. So compared to the standard bumper that we had on, we'll try and put a picture of what the cars look like when we got them. There's a massive difference in this. We've also gone wider. We've tried going a bit smoother and obviously trying to get the airflow in properly through the ducting here like this. So they've got, Adam will put some clips of the nice flange they've got on the back, but basically that's that. So yeah, the idea is if people have not watched the videos talking about how these work originally, the high pressure air goes in at the front through a small opening and then it increases size by roughly three times, something like that, and that slows the air down and lets it get through slower and cools it down. So people think bigger the opening, the better. It's not smaller, it's not just for aero, it's actually to slow the air down. Anyway, that's that. A few little bits to do on here. This car, if you watch the previous testing video, is in a million pieces. We've got pictures of what happened. So there we go. It's like a SEMA drive shaft. Which two rockers are brock here, Paul? Them uh, two there. Them two there. If you look down back, you can see it's, they've snapped exactly the same. There's all sat exactly the same. We're not sure exactly why it happened. This is the other problem. So we've made some improvements here. Bearing in mind, this part's 1,300 quid new. Managed to get a used one for, I think, half of that. So we've welded, welded the cam lobes up welded the boss that snapped off because it basically snapped here welded that on and i believe we've welded the end of them gears no we ain't done that yet are we doing that before it goes on we tacking it yeah just going to tack the end of the gears on as well so none of that can spin because the weak point on this anyway is the rocker itself because they snapped so we've got pictures of them so yeah today's tuesday we need to be loaded up and ready to go on thursday probably six o'clock at the latest so a lot of work to get that sorted dyno tested we need to change the flywheel in that as well because we're not happy with that we're thinking the harmonics might be causing us some problems here but we did rev it to 6000 rpm as well miss shifting <laughs> fifty-six is normal six thousand rpm so yeah, put some videos of what we've already done, what we're going to be doing, into a short montage, and then hopefully, am I going to talk before we go racing again? If something interesting happens, I will. If not, see you at Croft. Ladies and gents, it is currently oh, 10.45, oh no, 
unloaded one of the cars. Parallel parked it pretty good in there. Getting the other one off soon. Getting ready for test day tomorrow. We shall see how it goes. Hopefully it goes well, but uh, yeah. Oh boy, here we go. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is Friday testing. It is currently 9.45. Before we got all the cars in here for noise testing and the well, quick test session, I guess. This is sequential TT, it's looking pretty good, almost done. All the cameras are good. The manual, manual TT, also looking pretty snazzy. Everything seems to be good. We had a little bit of rain this morning. Normally got mesh in, but we haven't for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeksha mesh. Yeksha mesh. Oh, did you See? specify from being killed that yeah, most aerodynamic do. mesh they yeah, got? That's, that was Is it. it plastic? No, it's Ali. It feels it's plastic. Well. What, what is it? I don't want to know. Much it was. I don't want to know. No. I don't want to know. He no. didn't have any specifically for an Audi TT racing car. No, no TT no. race car no. mesh. You have have you to, done it? You have to do some cutting. Oh, it's got mesh. Yeah, it's got a mesh. Oh yeah. Where we had. Eight minutes to get the mesh in. Done it. It's not the best. Look, look at the sacrifices. Yeah, look at oh. finger. Oh no, oh is this finger gone? <laughs> so let's have this session. Try and get some better footage of what's going on. Just on a red flag.
intention na. So we're eating like yeah. JP Street food. Special. Up to up, aren't you? Yeah. That's from yesterday, it should have been out last night, but still. <laughs> Before you go on about what we've got going on here, whose car did you check pressures on first? Whose car? Said he needed an answer. Right, I we'll put video one evidence one. up. An and then he was, Luke were talking to me, telling me what my pressures were when I was still driving that pit lane. Who's looking at my car then? You got another game? Come on, Luke. Look how much different cars are. Scott's got that on it. <laughs> That's the only difference. A bit of yellow. He's got flashes. He's got a number one on the He's back. He's got number one on back. They're both black and red, alright. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This Civic's quick. <laughs> Delicious. Shout out to Shout em out to Tom. I pay for all my build That was a good car with that. If you do want to send me loads of free build on, I will have it. It's delicious. Where's where's the maximum time to be gained, Dylan? Well let's uh, let's zoom in a little bit. We'll fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. Ooh. We're skipping past all bits where you're faster than him. <laughs> What's there? happened there? Right there. We've got 120 and 101. Yeah. Was that through Jim Clark S's? You know that little right hander just after it? Right. Yeah. I don't think I ever went balls out through there. So you have a little touch on the brakes? Yeah. And You were just sending it? Yeah, nothing. Stay full, <laughs> stay full yeah. power through the first bit. Right. Which isn't very nice. Yeah. But that's where all the. Once points you do it sit. once, it's easy. After yeah, that. to be so fair, I will build it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the rest of it's. Not far off not for far each other, really. Yeah. So it's like you see through the S's there. Yeah, it starts there, doesn't it? Where I'm lifting a little bit, would you say? So greens 
uh, my Agreed throttle. Yeah, yeah. So I'm pretty high, like full throttle through the first bit, and you're kind of down here. And then we both, we're all both at the same there. But then, well, because you have that little touch on the brakes, yeah. you've got a little bit more throttle there, so you can afford to do that. Yeah. Um, Just brake through S is brake through right hand, and away we go, isn't it? Because, yeah, you lost a second in that one corner. Yeah. Um, but then at the end, you put it back just that little bit there. What am I doing different to you there then? So, as we go through the corner, on the exit, as we come out towards the far side, you go to five, six thousand RPM. Right. Fifty six hundred, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah and 50 mile an hour and the exit I'm being quite kind and going to four and a half you just need to scream it in seconds yeah but be fine don't worry about it I'm, I'm worried about your engine Dylan's coaching treats everything like it's his own <laughs> hopefully we ain't got a fine by the time this video comes it's out it's a business car sideways Somebody's Coca Cola in my car. Whoever it is! I think Scott might be taking me out on a date here. We're brothers. Dreg. Definitely a bit posh. Too posh for us this. Let's get to the track. We get the cars weighed. Ride height's checked. Look who we checked it. Failed ride height on that front corner for some reason. So lift it up a touch. Both sides at front.
my car is currently a little bit poorly, it's got a high rail pressure issue, and the live stream is not working, we'll figure that out, Paul's on it, Tom's on it, Scott's alright, think he will P1, hope the scuba nearly went alright, park firm here checks, we'll see. So while we're here, the other lads are at angles here, I'm not sure if they're featured in this video yet, but Adam, I keep touching Scott's screen and he hates that. Adam's currently second and a half in lead. practice but Adam's done it. So the issue was this plug here, the pins had opened up, if we can get a picture we can, probably not though, but the pins had opened up on the plug so then the injector were misfiring. But I didn't have a misfire code but I suppose if you don't know it's there it uh, so anyway not many changes. Full spanner check lifted the rear up a little bit to get a bit more rake. Yeah. We'll see what the results were anyway, because I don't even know exactly how far off I was yet. So, Scott, P1, out of line this, this is out of line, but anyway, 28-1, which I think I could have probably done, what did I go, 6, 29-7, only just got pipped by Johnny, I know Johnny well, yeah, these are the TCR, Cooper TCRs, these are the ones that we raced against last year. And then Morgan, Bailey, that's in the, in the Civic, so, yeah, not a million mile away anyway, but I wanted to be well into 28s, if not 27s today, so, we'll have a look at who we're racing when we get to area, assembly area. starting P1, there's a gap there where the TCR car should be starting P2, the orange yellowy one, another TCR, Johnny there, have a good one Johnny, P5, me P6, and then everybody else is kicking about, I don't know who's going to get me from behind or whatever, see what happens. It's time for the first Tagiwa road sports race of the year, it's a 45 minute mini endurance format on pole position it's going to be the number one car of last year's uh, club enduro champion uh, scott parkin in the audi tt tdi row three of the grid will be the 53 car next to them though will be the uh, ryan parkin audi tt tdi twin of Scott, he lines up sick. Well, in fact, the cars have made their way around most of the green flag lap for a rolling start. Mandatory pit stops between 15 and 30 minutes into the race. Looking forward to this, Chris? 
Absolutely. Uh, Scott Parkin, the uh, Club Enduro champion, as you mentioned, stepping up from Class B to Class A in a newly developed Audi TD, uh, TT from Darkside uh, Developments. And uh, obviously starting as he needs to go on by putting it on pole position. Uh, so very much looking forward to seeing how this one plays out. Yep, so 45 minute race, rolling start. And we're watching the lights to go out, which they do now. The race getting underway. And what a fantastic sound and sight they make. Uh, Scott Parking continuing to lead by two seconds now over Simon Mordrup and Scott Parking pulling that gap to two seconds and already uh, I would say quite flirting with the lap record just yet uh, but for, for what was the, the first flying lap of the, let's say uh, of, uh, of the race he's only six tenths away from uh, Dan Sylvester's uh, lap record of uh, 128.08 set last year. As a, oh, I said it, there we go, new lap record set on the third lap uh, of the race, 27.90 uh, for uh, Scott Parkin.
That yellow car and I was just eating for breakfast. is leading that just got parking and brake teeth on the margin of second and brake teeth, third 25, down roll, fourth and sixth, right parking.
Frank Barkin up in second place uh, now, according to the timing screen, after the pit stops have shaken out. And uh, yeah, as we said, much closer to his teammate than the timing screen uh, instigated. The gap is 13 seconds. Yeah, so, I mean, and the change there is that Ryan Parkin did get ahead of a couple of cars, didn't he, in uh, more Simon Morger and Darren Ball. So it's yes. got Parkin number one that leads. Number six, Ryan Parkin second.
Um, five minutes to go of this race. Uh, and there's uh, Ryan Parkin chased by the 18 car. There's actually only about six tenths of a second between Ryan Parkin and Simon Morgan now on the last lap. Yep, very lapsing, very yeah. similar lap times actually. So they're circulating together. We could yet have a change for second place here. You've got the Audi TT. I think this was a car that competed in the VW Cup, which sounds a little bit odd, doesn't it? But there was a period of time where the Audi TTs were allowed to compete in the VW Cup. I think that's uh, initially where this came from. I think it was a slide sports car, perhaps originally. And Dark Side have, have taken it over and uh, prepared it to race in, in endurance racing. Changes to the uh, to the entry as the has gone. Close moment here for uh, Brian Parkin coming up against the Toyota MR2 for a second. It might have given Wonder a bit of a sniff in second place, but if anything, it's actually worked in favour of Brian Parkin. He's just been able to stretch an extra half a car length uh, on the third place challenge. The lap there's the race leader which is uh, Simon Parkin uh, absolutely nothing around him now no very quiet indeed there's the on-board shot with the Ryan looking like he's gonna lose out just but he'll probably point out the uh, expensive upgrades that uh, that Scott's put on to his car as the reason Scott's uh, come home a fairly comfortable winner uh, between the two of them here there you see Ryan's got a lot more traffic around him that's the other factor he'll point out as well no doubt a lot more traffic for me to deal with he's there in third mortgaged ahead of him in second in that TCR car they lapped the class D leading Matt Adcock uh, for about the fourth or fifth time during the course of this race uh, but here with 20 seconds to go is Scott Parkin now are we going to squeeze one more lap out of this or are we going to get the chequered flag over the line he goes no no sign on the chequered flag so last lap it is yeah
as the race leader Scott Parkin is into the hairpin for the final time. It's been a pretty famous drive as far as we've seen. From Scott Parkin up to the line he comes. Checkered flag goes out and he wins the first Tiki One Motorsport Series race of the year by a handsome margin. Just waiting to see who's going to be second. It's very tight indeed. Here is it going to be Ryan Parkin, Scott's twin, who comes out of it on top. Don't think so. It's just going to be Simon Walker that holds on by about a car length or two from Ryan Parkin. Very tight finish for second place in the end. Let's have a look at the results then at the end of that 45 minute race. Scott Parkin, it was that took the winning car number one, 30 laps completed. He finished 16.253 seconds ahead of Simon Morga in second place, number 18. Third was number six, Ryan Parkin. Fourth. So our 45 minute race does come to a close and I've got our Class A winner, Scott Parkin here. Scott, well, you've gone from winning Class B to winning Class A quite quickly, haven't you? Yeah, well, that's exactly what the plan was. So uh, yeah, glad that the car's held together. Um, we've not done a lot of testing with this. Um, we've obviously got the other TT that run last year. A few reliability issues towards the end of the season, so we wanted to try and iron everything out of that before building this, which only left us like two test days before this weekend. So, yeah, I'm glad that it's all held together. A few teething troubles, you know, it wasn't all plain sailing, but, uh, yeah, as good as we can uh, expect. Anything substantially different racing in Class A compared to Class B? Yeah, everything's a lot faster. The closing speeds on the back markers, you know, I'm not used to two or three laps in getting to lap traffic, you know, in class B you, you're a lot further along in the race before you start to seeing that. But it does mean because the closing speeds are different, it's a bit easier to overtake some of the back markers, but then some of them do also make it uh, a little bit hard work to get around them still. Well, a good start to the season for you and the parking one too as well. Uh, no, I think he was third. Oh, yeah, did yeah. He, was, he was in second until like the last two laps or something, I believe. You need to have some words with him. Yeah, definitely. He needs to speed up, doesn't he? But I have got the better car, I will admit. So my car's got a few extra toys compared to his. So uh, Swap the cars around for the next race, right? No chance. Yeah. <laughs> Congrats again and see you uh, tomorrow. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. Where have you been? Uh, scales, but there are a few people in front of me. So All right. All good? Well, yeah, miles to every like 12, 12, 18 or something like that. What should we be? 11.77. Right. Sweet. V1 for Scott. You know he had his 10 second penalty. P3 for me. Could have probably not been two if I was. Dirty. But I'd rather enjoy the race. Check hands afterwards, that's the idea of club racing. You know, plastic trophy. Okay, it's been a beautiful day. All been good, something's happening up here. Somebody's winning. Yeah. Don't know how many pieces this is going to get chopped into. But, yeah, happy, cars are good. I'm going to get all this washed. I'm going home. Now I'll be back soon. Just watching, just watching my last two laps. Thank you to the lads. See you tomorrow. In third place, it was Ryan Parkin with the Audi TT Dino. In second place, after a great battle with Ryan in the closing stages, it was Simon Major. And in first, first place, and a relatively dominant winner, um, having set pole and fastest lap as well, it was Scott Parkin. Yeah.